my sweetheart dear, my poor old invalid aunt. Besides, I ain't no fool, I'm a going to school and I'm a working in a defense plant. I got a dead eyes like a bat and my feet are flat and my asthma's getting worse. Yes, think of my career, my sweetheart dear, my poor old invalid All political views are welcome, all opinions are welcome. There is a sign-in sheet here. You will have your turn to speak, to perform, if you have political poetry. If you would like to, uh, to play your instrument. Welcome to Quad City. Not Davenport, not Rock Island, not Moline, not Bendor. Welcome to Quad City. This is all about the Quad I want to thank Yeah. Okay, good afternoon. We are gathered here today to speak truth to justice, truth to power. Accordingly, as Mayor of Davenport, I want to remind all citizens, public and appointed city officials, the news media, and anyone else that the First Amendment to the United States Constitution reads as follows. Congress shall make no laws abridging the freedom of express, speech or of press, or the rights of people to peaceably assemble and petition the government for redress of grievances. American history is dotted with popular movements like the Occupy protest. To name a few, Cox's army marched to Washington, D.C. in 1894 to demand that Congress create public works jobs for the unemployed. Kelly's army, a group of unemployed protesters from California, crossed the western United States by commandeering trains that marched on foot from Council Bluffs, Iowa to Washington, D.C. and joined Cox's army, army to protest unemployment. In 1932, 1932, the famous Bonus Army, amid the Great, De amid the Great Depression, about 17,000 largely unemployed World War I veterans and their family and families occupied public lands in Washington, D.C. in search of jobs and justice. We are following that tradition. In this spirit, in this spirit, and in, and in solidarity with Occupy, the Occupy movement, that I wholeheartedly and enthusiastically welcome and join you in welcoming you to the Leclerc Park today. Let me remind you, as Mayor of Davenport, I call upon you to please heed the words of the late Martin Luther King, Jr., who said in his I Have a Dream speech, given on the National Mall, let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. He went on to say, we must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to generate into physical violence. I know of what I speak, for I was there on that historic day on August 28, 1963. My point here is the Occupy Wall Street, Occupy the Quad Cities movement, has to date been rooted in the best tradition and spirit of the American protest based on nonviolence, and let us keep it that way today. As long as this movement remains nonviolent, the American people will be sympathetic and supportive. And let this movement not be co-opted, not be co-opted by censor or cynical forces who would like to see it derailed or destroyed, such as the Koch brothers, in order to prevent the attainment of our goal of real justice in the world. As Martin Luther King was fond of saying, 
We will not be satisfied until justice rolls like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Now, since this is a public soapbox, I too, as a member of the public, wish to put forward some suggestions and observations that I have advocated for years that I think would help make for a much more just society. It takes about five of these or eight of these. First, what the world really needs, folks, is a more fair distribution of income, power, and wealth. As Pope Paul III and other, as Pope Paul II and other religious leaders have said, and I quote, the needs of the poor take priority, priority over the rich, uh, the need, desires of the rich. The, the rights of workers over the maximization of profits. The preservation of the environment takes precedent over uncontrolled industrial expansion. And the production to meet social needs over the production of military purposes. Unfortunately, John Paul's words, as well as others, have fallen on deaf ears. The economic gap between the rich and the poor, the rich and the middle class, has widened every year since 1980. Second, economic redistribution and equality of opportunity require adequate public revenues. Tax reform at all levels must become a reality. To pay off the federal debt, I recommend the enactment of a federal progressive tax on net wealth starting with those individuals who have net wealth of $10 million. The hoarders, the hoarders and malefactors of great wealth and fortunes must be made to pay for the injustices that they have perpetrated on the American people and the people of the world since the beginning of time. Third, President Lincoln in his Gettysburg Address said, this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that ours is the government of the people and by the people. He did not say it was a government by corporations, of corporations, and for corporations. Corporations are not people, and free speech should not be equated with money. Congress should immediately expand the size of the Supreme Court and add new justices who would reverse Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission. Fourth, fourth, and there are only four more. Fourth, it has been, been made painfully clear for years that we have the best government money can buy. And in order to promise, in order for us to realize the promise of change we believe in, and to finally become a reality that there is hope and change out there, we must have public financing of campaigns. Bravo. Public elections, public elections, ladies and gentlemen, should be publicly financed. Fifth, fifth. Abolish the Federal Reserve Board, or, or at the very least, have equal number of, of its members appointed by the United States House of Representatives, the Senate, and the President. The Federal Reserve Board, the most powerful institution in the world, needs to be accountable to you, the American people. And it's not today. Sixth, sixth Congress should immediately pass legislation Forgiving all student loan debt. Yeah. Think about it. At the very least, forgive a third of all outstanding student loan debt. Allow students to volunteer their time to nonprofit organizations for, uh, also, and uh, reduce it by a third there. And as they find full time employment, allow students to pay off the remaining third of their debt over time at monthly payments that they can, aff that they can afford. Yeah. Shame, shame on this country. Shame on this country for allowing a system that so severely penalizes young people for just trying to get an education. That's not what this should be all about. Seven, 
seven, seven, every American able to work ought to be given an opportunity to work. And ladies and gentlemen, if the private sector, sector can't or will not put Americans to work, then the public sector must. We need jobs now in America. We did it under Franklin Roosevelt. We can do it again today. And eight, eight, war. War should always be the last resort rather than the first option. And Mr. President, end all existing wars now rather than later. And remember, if you want peace, if you want peace in this world, work for justice. In closing, in closing, the struggle for economic and social justice should never end. Don't let it end here today or tomorrow or 30 or 90 days from now. Make it your lifetime commitment. And I ask you, never quit, never give up. Keep hope alive. You, you are the true patriots. You are the real America. Thank you and God bless you all. I'm pretty new to the Quad Cities. I was told that Mayor Gruber has a long history of uh, social justice uh, uh, causes, and uh, I thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> now, I would like to focus my speech on four questions. What is the social significance of the Occupy Wall Street protest? What does it mean? That was my initial reason for calling this uh, political soapbox. For people to start saying to themselves, there's something here, there's something important here. What, what is it all about? The second question is, are occupiers liberals and Democrats, or is the larger social issue above our partisan philosophies? The third question is, what are some of the issues we can begin to identify for the Occupy uh, causes? And finally, how do we mobilize from here? From today, how do we mobilize? How do we take the next step? Okay, social significance. First of all, there has been a rising, what I call a rising of global consciousness. <clears throat> the Arabs are beginning to realize that they don't deserve freedom unless they rise up and break the bonds of oppressors, break the bonds of their political dictators. Uh, we saw how Saddam Hussein was found in a hole. Now we see how the latest dictator was found also in a pipe, and how he how he end how his life of of abusing his people and calling them rats. This is not tolerable anymore. We the people re are beginning are beginning to raise our consciousness and realize that we can break the bonds of these uh, these alien things that oppress us. So while the Arabs are realizing that they are breaking their uh, dictator uh, political bonds, European countries, whether it be in Europe, whether it be in America, we are realizing that we have an equal kind of oppressor. And that is the entrenched, the entrenched economic system which keeps our wealth stolen, which steals our wealth from us constantly directed upwards. <clears throat> Republicans speak so much about small businesses and creating wealth and being entrepreneurs. But no one, no one has ever brought up the issue of how hard it is to get a business off the ground. Why should it be so hard for we, the people, to be creative? Everyone's yelling for another Steve Jobs. That's just one man. If we, the people, had more opportunity to start businesses, there'd be a million Steve Jobs. How many Steve Jobs are right now in this crowd? But you wouldn't know it, because you're busy working at McDonald's, or you're busy working 
so long that when you get home, all you want to do is vegetate. Yeah. Is that uh, we have equal oppressors. Maybe it's not political, but actually, these economic oppressors infiltrate the political system too. I know that there are many of individuals here will make speeches about how government is setting laws that oppress real people. And why? It is because the money interests over time I would like to listen to what he's saying. <laughs> Over time, <laughs> Over time, the, the money interest have really infiltrated our political system. And to me, the worst thing that I see is when the Supreme Court made that judgment that corporations have, the, uh, have equal rights to people. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. To me, that is the sign of corruption at the, at, the, at the worst, you know, the highest. When corruption can get to the Supreme Court, when these, uh, when these, uh, these uh, uh, Republican-minded individuals get, uh, start making a national laws and, 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 and redefining the legal system, uh, in this way, anyways, um, <clears throat> so the second question, are occupiers liberals and Democrats or is there a larger social issue beyond these partisan philosophies? If we take the issue of the polarization of our global wealth seriously, we begin to realize that we are the 99% who are denied an equitable share of our world's resources. Whether we, we, whether we be Republican, Tea Partiers, uh, whether we be small business owners, we are still the 99%. When you stand here, you are the 99%. By focusing on how we might fight for an economic system where we can keep a fairer portion of the wealth we create, rather than artificially redistributing it, we can rise above the Republican self-sufficiency versus the socialist redistribution debate. Right now, the Republicans and the Tea Parties are yelling, don't it's, it's, it's not good if you are yelling, take wealth from the rich and give to the poor. They're saying that, what I'm saying, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is change the system in such a way that the poor will keep the wealth they create. I don't believe the Occupy movement is for taking wealth and giving it. It's not a Robin Hood movement. It's not. We're not a flea party who just wants, you know, for to be to take from the rich and, 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 and fill our uh, bank accounts. No, we're all about people who are hip to what's going on and realizing that uh, it's a matter of how wealth is. Uh, how do I say? How created wealth is distributed rather than what's taken. When, for example, and uh, the mayor brought up the issue of uh, of the uh, Fed. Now, and uh, in the uh, River City Reader, there was an article, Occupy the Fed, not Wall Street. Now, I think these, these points are getting really at the heart of what the matter is. Who owns the general resources of the Fed, if not we the people? The Fed is like, um, it's like, the, the, there was like, uh, in the past, there was like uh, an island that used sand dollars from, for currency. And one time I asked a question uh, uh, to my friend. I said, when somebody find a new sand dollar out of the ocean and it gets circulated in the currency of that island, where does the value come from? Where does the value of that sand dollar come from? Think about it. If you have an island in the ocean, and their currency is to use the sand dollars, which, which is, a, which is a, a kind of a seashell, okay? They, they use that as their currency. When a new sand dollar is found in the ocean and circulated in that, in that, on that island, who owns that? Where does the wealth come from? Where does the value for that come from? Well, it, is, it takes its value from an equal portion of the entire island. The economy of the entire island, it borrows its, its value from. So when the Fed create money, where does the value come from? All of we, the people, all of us, all of our wealth, it eats into all of our wealth. So what do they do with this money? They lend banks at 0% interest. 
corporate banks at 0% interest. And then when we borrow, we pay 20% interest on our credit cards. Does that make sense? That they're borrowing from us at, and, uh, and, and lending at 0% and charging us 20%? If we occupy the feds instead, what we can do is let them give direct loans at 0% to small businesses. Think about it. That is a very specific, powerful idea that can come out of the Occupy movement. If small businesses were able to borrow money at 0%, all the wealth that was created by these, these uh, poor small business creators, they'll keep it. They won't be sending that wealth to investors who are sitting on millions of dollars and are sitting on their butts and making money by just sitting on their butts and, and underwriting. Right now, the global, right now I believe we're in what I call a primitive capitalistic system that is skewing wealth creation to be, be further polarized with those who own most of the wealth of the world who already own it and are underwriting the loans, they're getting a disproportionate amount of the wealth we create. And they are not creating anything. All they're doing is facilitating with the wealth they've already have. Why should starting a small business be as hard as the space shuttle breaking the gravity of the Earth? Do you know how much fuel is used for the space shuttle to break the gravity of the Earth? Well, in our, present, in our present unjust, primitive capitalistic system, it takes that much energy to become rich. It takes that much energy to start a business and become wealthy. And again, I make the point, the Steve Jobs can be found when the people are liberated. Because it, it was just an accident that one man with a talent was able to be just in that right place to make such a creative difference in the world. Imagine how much of us that have talent right now can't do it because we're out there. I spent uh, six years as a trucker, writing a book, talking to my fellow Americans. And I came from a teacher to be a trucker. And I see how truckers work so hard and how much good ideas they have over the CB radio. And it's all put to waste because they have to work, you know, they're, they're treated like machines, you know. So I, my, with my personal experience, come from that. I am the 99%, just like all of you. And, you know, I, when I was trying to recruit for this event, I go to the mall. And I tell the, I, I talk to the, to the workers at the mall, I say, hey, pass the word. They're like, what is Occupy Wall Street? And I'm like, wow. And they're like, you know, we work so hard. By the time I get home, I just want to sleep. I, I just want to, you know. Uh, go to the bar or something. I don't have time to listen to the news. That's how we are. That's, that's how we are abused. That's how we are kept down. This is not inconsistent with what the Tea Party is saying. The Tea Party rose up against uh, the government lending money to, these, uh, to, to bail out these banks. Well, the banks blackmailed us into doing that. We had to do that. Uh, if we didn't, we would have collapsed even more. So ultimately, I say that we had to. But I say this is the time to make, uh, now that resulted in the, the, uh, the rise of the, uh, of the Occupy Wall Streeters who are realizing that it's, now to take, it's time to take a major change now and, and finally resolve this matter. Okay, so the issues that we can begin to identify inspire creativity and stimulate wealth production by bringing Fed lending rates to the bottom of the wealth pyramid, what I, what I mentioned before, lending at zero percent to small businesses. That would stimulate the economy, it would be a massive stimulus, stimulus project. Instead of lending to the banks, you lend directly to the, to the wealth creators. It would also significantly reduce uh, uh, unemployment because there are so many individuals with business ideas that would just love the funding to get it started. Uh, and now here is a very interesting thing that we can, we can talk about. Begin thinking about how we define human heroism. Discouraging, tying success to financial gain 
and begin opening our minds to the very many forms of achievement, such as the arts. Right now, what happened, let, let me ask you a question, what happened on the corporate level that caused this great theft of American wealth with, with, the, with, the, with the present recession? We had a bunch of individuals, a bunch of smart individuals who are working in Wall Street that say to themselves, you know what? If I can make a billion dollars, I'm a hero. If I can get away with a billion dollars, I'm a hero. American society, the world society right now, defines terrorism as the next Donald Trump. If I can be the next Donald Trump, I succeed. I'm proposing to us, let us redefine what, what the hero is. Let's redefine the, uh, the hero as anyone that can contribute to the betterment of humanity. Okay, <clears throat> so, um, and uh, another issue, find ways to perpetually activate the people. Keep us constantly active. If we make the mistake of trying to, find a, trying to form a political party or trying to find a, a, a presidential candidate, in time, that party will be infiltrated again by the moneyed interests. In time, the presidential candidate will be corrupted by campaign contributions of the wealthy. It is better that we remain perpetually active in an organization and continually lobby and keep politicians accountable according to these economic justice uh, concerns of ours. Term limits! Yes. 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 Term limits. Okay, finally, let me finish because I don't want to take up all the soapbox here. Uh, there are many, very many individuals willing to come up and speak. <clears throat> Finally, where do we go from this point onward after this event today? If you are interested in this dialogue and want to take part in thinking up a brighter new world, record your name, number, and email in my notebook. I'm going I'm to present the notebook to you, and I want us to start forming a smaller uh, focus group. Uh, individuals who have free time, let's get together, let's meet at the libraries, let's meet at City Hall, let's form a smaller focus group and start hammering out these ideas. You can friend um, <clears throat> uh, Occupy Wall Street or Occupy Quad Cities Facebook is the main Facebook for the, uh, for, uh, the Occupy uh, uh, organizing here. And also, I have um, what I call a visionary um, uh, page, which is called New American Spring. If you uh, search fa Facebook pages, New American Spring, it is where all of the ideas that I'm presenting here you know, that's, that's the beginning point where we can all mobilize around uh, and begin to uh, hammer out these ideas and make a real contribution to all of Occupy across the country. Because we are equally Occupy and we can start uh, uh, finding some, uh, some solutions. Let, let a constant occupation begin in the Quad Cities from this day forward. We need not disobey our civil authorities to keep our message constant. For example, the winter will be coming so if individuals are not inclined to camping out, now uh, I welcome those individuals who are inclined to camping out. They, uh, they, the city has welcomed them, they have a permit to do so. If you're not inclined to camping out with the winter, I can foresee where a coordinator can work with individuals to say, what, what hours are you free in daylight hours? Let's meet in front of this unemployment office and pick it. Let's, conti let's continually march. I would like to see in every daylight hour during this coming year, there should be signs raised and marches going on at some place in the Quad Cities throughout from this day forward. And finally, this new American Spring uh, idea that we're working on uh, to, 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 to give some, uh, some solutions to the Occupy movement, uh, this can morph into a economic adv advocacy organization that's really potent and will make a difference in politics. Like I say, perpetually activated. So thank you very much for hearing me. And uh, I welcome now the first individuals on the, on the list. Let's give this lady a quick announcement for her last kitchen.
Hi, um, we're running a kitchen. We have a permit with the city for people who will be camping. I was seeing if I could get a raise of hands of people who might be interested in camping and drumming and participating in that over at Centennial Park as soon as everyone's done speaking here. One person camping, I, we have a permit from the city. I mean, we're gonna be serving um, sandwiches from Jimmy John's and Greatest Grain has donated soup. So we're gonna be cooking food and serving um, hot chocolate, coffee, tea. It's, you know, this is part of the occupying movement. So we should be occupying an area. Nobody plans on doing that or? Raise your hands. Yeah, right on. Right on. Okay, so, all right. so we've got to raise our hands. All right, so that's going to be over at Centennial, which is just on the other side of the baseball diamond. Trinity is with the uh, the Midwest Writing Center. She is one of my um, and oh, on the intense points of. Uh, society. Uh, when I came to the Quad Cities, the, uh, the Midwest Writing Center was my creative outlet, and I give them kudos. Uh, they had a Bohemian Ball last night, so I couldn't attend the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, sign making. Uh, but uh, I told my Midwest creative people to come on up and do creative uh, political poetry and all such, so uh, let's have a wonderful event this evening. Give it up for Roger for doing this and everyone else. We have a lot of neglect in our country and in the world. And uh, here's a poem about neglect. The bombing field of neglect. Seminal frustration bears the yoke of terrorized angst. Come creeping by a switchblade of cut off the whites. Yield no splendor in cavernous fields, amber full the embodiment of liberty's cry for justice. Dismemberment of the chieftain's regalia at dance time. And the crux of the matter pertains to this. Petunias also play in the bombing field of neglect. And children with no mother anguish in the subliminal nature of swollen artifacts aimed at corruption. A landing utensil made out of tin. Why war echoes the prototype of the great sin. Begun lecherous bed sheets of red blasphemed by sulfur and gin. Choreographed the new audience, the new sepulchers reigning in. Adrenaline corpses lie in the rows of an aftermath. Too fragilized to move and blend in the political feverish numb to call a cry insurmountable. Thank you.